In 1983, a 23-year-old graphic designer named Chris Costello was idly doodling with a calligraphy pen in his downtime at his agency job. Little did he know that his doodles would form the basis of a typeface that would one day be installed on over a billion computers, used in the logos of multiple prominent brands, and gain the dubious distinction of being unofficially the world's second most hated font. This is the story of Papyrus. Papyrus is a hard typeface to categorize. On the one hand, it has all these little nicks and imperfections that make it look like it was drawn by hand on parchment paper, which it was, originally at least. So it often gets lumped in uh, to the script typeface family, which isn't really a category. It's, it's just kind of a big grab bag for all the typefaces that are too unruly to sit at the table with, you know, serif or sans serif. But on the other hand, aside from those nicks, Papyrus doesn't really have any of the other formal characteristics that would make it resemble handwriting. There's no ligatures, there's no tilt to the letters, there's no irregular penmanship. You know, the stems and crossbars are unerringly straight. The curves are, like, too graceful. They're, like, too good, almost. Like, squint your eyes, and Papyrus could almost be a humanistic sans serif? I mean, it's maybe a bit too indulgent to really fit in there. But my point is that Papyrus is a very unique typeface because it combines the legibility of a sans serif typeface with the handcrafted veneer of a script typeface. And I think it's this unique combination of traits that makes it such an easy choice for spas, restaurants, enchiladas, and other brands that are seeking to evoke, mm, I don't know, a return to nature or a connection to an unspecified ancient culture while still wanting something that's easy to read on a menu. But let's go back to Chris for a second. So Chris's father was a professional sign painter. In an interview with Fast Company, Chris said that starting in elementary school, he'd get me to help him paint his signs or illustrate brochures. So Chris already had years of practice with display type when he was doodling with that calligraphy pen. Quote, I was thinking a lot about the Middle East then, in biblical times, so I was drawing a lot of ligatures and letter letters with hairline arrangements. So that was kind of, you know, the vibe he was going for and that he arguably captured really well. Um, he took this set of letters, which at first was just capitals and attempted to sell it to a bunch of different companies. Uh, they all rejected him until he went to the company Letraset. So Letraset at that time made these vinyl sheets that were covered in type that could easily be transferred onto paper just by rubbing. That was like a quick way to do mock-ups before computer publishing software. So Letraset commissioned Chris to finish out Papyrus with letter case letters, and then they added it to their catalog. However, it would take another decade until Papyrus really took off. So in the mid-90s, Letraset's transfer sheets stopped being cutting-edge technology and started to be overshadowed by desktop publishing. So they started licensing the rights of their some of their typefaces to other companies. One of those companies was Microsoft. <laughs> and they included Papyrus as one of the default fonts in Microsoft Office starting in 1997, and they've continued to do so in every version of Microsoft Office to this day. Apple later followed suit and added Papyrus as a default to Mac OS in 2003. So the combination of those two players alone means that Papyrus is installed on at least a billion computers worldwide, if not more. You know, personally, Papyrus was one of the first fonts I started noticing out in the wild. I was familiar with it from my own early experiments in design, so when I saw it on store signs and restaurant menus, it popped out. Uh, Francesca's collection is probably the store I most associate with Papyrus. 
So this is a chain of women's clothing stores that has about 460 locations around the U.S. currently. So the company went public back in 2011, and doing some digging, I found that they switched their logo sometime between November 12th and 16th, 2012, um, and they basically changed the typeface to something that is almost but not quite papyrus. They've taken out those nicks and, you know, adjusted a thing here or there. This is seems to be a trend. It, so most of the examples I used in this video are from nearly a decade ago. It's really hard to find recent examples of papyrus, you know, in a really prominent way. And I think that just as the rise of desktop publishing helped spread papyrus, the rise of smartphones and social media shaming are kind of making it a relic of a distant past.